Hi, this is Laura Chappell. I'm the founder of Wireshark University. And in this video, I'm going to answer the question, how the do I create customized columns? Now, I'm over in Wireshark, and I've loaded a file called download-bad. That's a file that's on the Laura's Lab Kit that's available online at www.novell.com forward slash connection magazine forward slash laurachapel.html. That Laura's Lab Kit has got lots of great tools on it. It's also got training on it, and it has a ton of trace files. One of the trace files you'll find on there is download-bad. Now in this case, I want to create a customized column. And until we hit Wireshark version 1, we didn't have that capability of having customized columns. We were just set with a standard type of column available to us. I'm going to select the Preferences button. And this is where we're setting the global preferences for Wireshark. On the left-hand side, I'll select Columns. Now here are the standard set of columns that Wireshark is set up with. If you wish to, you can create a brand new column by clicking the New button and giving your column a name. And the name will depend on the format. So here I'll open up the format area. And here you can see these are all of the previously created columns that are available to you. So if you did want to have a relative time column for the conversation, or you wanted an hardware, a hardware destination address unresolved, so you don't have the first three bytes resolved to the manufacturer's ID, you could add these as columns. But I want to add a column that's not in this list, for example. I want to add a column looking at the TCP window size field. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got to figure out, if I'm going to do a custom column, I've got to figure out what that field looks like that I want to build my column on. All of this communication is TCP-based communications. I'm going to open up the TCP header, and there's my window size field. Now in the very bottom of the, the window here in Wireshark, you'll see in the status line, there it says window size. And this is the value we're interested in. We're going to create these custom columns using our display filter syntax. So tcp.window underscore size is what we'll use to create our column. Now I'll go back to preferences. I'll select Columns, say that I want to create a brand new column. My column is going to be the TCP Win Size column. In the Format area, I'm going to select Custom. Now once you select Custom, on the right hand side you'll see that a little window pops up and this is where we're going to put in the syntax for our new column. So tcp.window underscore size. If you've entered the correct syntax, you'll see the background turns green. Now I'll say OK. Now on the far right hand side, my trace file should have another column in it called TCP Win Size, and there it is. Now you may see that we have the window size field in a number of these packets, but not in all of the packets. For example, in this trace file, you can see in frame number four, this frame does not show the window size field value. Instead, it's giving us the decode at the highest layer pop possible, which is HTTP. So this is the window size field value in that packet. Now in this case, the client 10.0.52.164 has requested a file from a server. The file it's requesting is the Open Office application. This is the whole suite that it's going to download. Now what I want to do is I want to look at the client that made those requests. As that file is downloading, I want to see how that window size value changes. Remember that the TCP window size field value is the amount of received buffer space available for this download that's using TCP as the transport. On the left hand side, I'm going to click on the source column heading. And now I've got all the packets that are from 10.0.52.164 showing up on top. I'll resize my columns a little bit here. Now on the right hand side, if I scroll over, oh, let me bring over my TCP window size column. On the right hand side, we can see these are the TCP window sizes advertised by our client. The first packet is typically unusual because that's when the client is setting up something called window scaling in that header. 
Here the client says that it offers a window size field of 65,535 bytes, but in that same TCP header it defines that it's doing window scaling, and that value of 65,535 should be multiplied by 4. Wireshark by default will multiply that for me and always give me the true window size field being advertised. Now here we can see as we scroll down, we can look and see the client starts out around 256,960 for a window size field. And as we scroll down and that client receives data, we can see this window size field value dropping. Look, now we're down to 189,800. We have a problem in this trace file where we had packet loss that occurred and that forced a number of duplicate acknowledgments to be sent out from this client. If we keep scrolling, we can see eventually we have a problem here with the TCP receive window size field. Look at this. Our client got down to a TCP window size field value of zero, which, it, which essentially stopped the entire download process. This is a great trace file because it not only has a problem with high latency, but it also has packet loss and has a problem on the receiver's side where the receiver has run out of buffer space to receive the data. So that's how we add a column into Wireshark. Remember, you're going to be using your display filter syntax when you create your new columns.